Hello. Uh, following the works of Dr. Brian Lynch, Dr. Donald Mattinson, uh, that are inspired by Sylvan Tompkins' works, and uh, comparing them to my research about not intentional or non-intentional attitudes during the learning process, I'd like to, to go on with the path of learning our emotions. And um, I'd, I'd like to propose a video about the scripts of learning, how we build uh, non-intentionally scripts of learning or scripts of disability learning and how we can try to change those scripts uh, of uh, being disabled to learn in scripts of learning. And uh, emotion has a great deal to do with all that. And emotional conflicts that have the setting in the classroom. According to Brian Lynch, uh, we can distinguish nine emotions, interest, joy, surprise, anger, fear, distress, disgust, dismal, and shame. Uh, those emotions are issued of our affect system. We must look, according to Donald Natterson, uh, far beyond the invisible drive in our search for the nature of emotion. Affect makes us care about different things in different ways. The reason that emotion is so important to a thinking being is that affect controls our acts upon the way we use thought, just as it takes over or influence bodily actions at the seat specific for it. Whenever we are said to be motivated, it is because an affect has made us so. And we are motivated in the direction and form characteristic of the affect. Whatever is important to us, it made so by affect. Affect is the engine that drives us. That's why it's so important to pay attention to what drives us or, on the contrary, bored us during the learning process. The first affect is interest excitement, according to Sylvan Tompkins. And, uh, Donald Natterson described this effect like this. He said, anybody who writes, paints, composes, dances, or invents will gladly tell you how life can be taken over by the excitement generated in the wake of such novel thoughts. So alien to one's normal life can be the excitement of creativity that the ancient Greeks believed the new ideas and the emotionally associated with them were the gift of an external being, an external being, uh, uh, pardon, called a muse. When we say that someone has been struck by the muse, we mean to indicate that this person is helplessly excited by new ideas, constantly triggering, triggering the effect interest excitement. So, uh, how do we get inspired by the muses? How do we get interested in the classroom? Uh, what makes, what, what is the startle to this affect? Uh, uh, I notice that Students are interested when the interest is mutual, is shared. The teacher, the instructor, it can be a yoga instructor or the professor at the university, involves the students in such a way in the learning process that they get interested. 
the involvement is very important. Uh, in French, we, we call involvement implication, according to uh, Diane Saint-Jacques works in the University of Montreal. There are many ways to involve a student in the learning process. Ask him to solve a problem by himself, with the help of his colleagues, uh, show him his own ability uh, in solving problems, his personal talent, demonstrate trust, empathy, and help him to go on with his difficulties. Uh, offer him an actor learning script instead, instead of a spectator one. Uh, even the way people look at each other can show empathy, mutual interest, or uh, demonstrate uh, that we feel concerned about them, about the students, that we are happy to be in the classroom. So there is a, another very important uh, effect that encourages the learning script, it is enjoyment joy. Tompkins, uh, according to Nathanson, Dr. Nathanson, has uh, commented that shared interocular contact, people merely gazing at each other, is the most intimate of human activities. How easy is this to understand when we recognize that the wonderful process of empathy depends entirely on the fact that each of us share with the others this identical group of effect mechanisms. So we deeply share uh, those effects of interest, of joy, and we can recognize in our joy the joy of the other. Uh, joy is contagious. Uh, when a teacher is motivated, is happy to do his job, is glad to share his knowledge, usually the enthusiasm becomes mutual. Anyway, it is easier to help the students to learn, even those who show more difficulties in the learning process. On the contrary, if the teacher is depressed, angry, nervous, if he under-evaluates the students, blaming them all the time, if he's never satisfied with the results, if it's impossible to satisfy himself. I remember a teacher who said, 10 is for God, 9 is for me, and the rest of the grades are for you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, if the, the teacher is the only actor on the stage and all the others are spectators, uh, students have a chance to quickly get, get bored in the classroom if they don't feel involved, if there is no joy, if there is no mutual interest. So those effects are very important. Of course, uh, we usually in our field, philosophy of education, we think a lot about the cognitive uh, aspect of the learning process. We, we know that it's very important that the student uh, has this, the, the, this, the place of an actor in the learning process, that he has to solve problems by himself, that we have to uh, build up, as Vygotsky and Piaget study, uh, um, a proximal zone of uh, learning by uh, building problems that people are able to solve and give them all the guidance to solve those problems. And this cognitive aspect is very important and not to let them passively only repeat what we say. So we have research about the cognitive side, but if emotion is not there, empathy, trust, uh, interest, mutual interest, 
uh, and joy, joy of of sharing uh, the knowledge, then we're going to bore them. <laughs> and uh, in some way, uh, uh, we're going to encourage the disability learning script, what I call the non-intentional script the script of anger, the street, script of the smell, the script of disgust, the script of shame during the learning process. So this disability learning script is what interests us now, right? Pride is a very important drive in the learning process. Through life, any experience in which personal efficacy is linked with a positive effect will produce healthy pride. Uh, when students are actors, uh, when they solve problems by their own, they have a chance to be proud of their results. If they only repeat the lesson, they don't really create anything. They will only be proud of being obedient but they will not learn to be the author of the script. In this way, some teachers can manipulate pride. Are the students going to be proud of pleasing the authority in the classroom, uh, even if they dislike what is going on there? Are they going to be proud of understanding how to solve a problem by themselves, proud of being free to do so, and do it together with the other colleagues. What does mean personal efficacy in the classroom? What is the script of the play? A competitive game full of shame and humiliation or a cooperative game where play is a really pleasure and where interest and joy are part of the play. To be proud. A is for Donald Nathanson, an exultation that involves the effect enjoyment joy and should properly be considered as one of the named emotions in which effect figures promi prominently. I define this feeling as one form of healthy proud, a normal emotion occurring in a rather specific situation one that can be seen naturally and reproduced experimentally from earliest infancy through adult life. There are three conditions to one experience this sort of pride. A purpose, purposeful, go-directed, intentional activity is undertaken while under the influence of the affect interest excitement. That's the first step to get people interested, excited about learning. Two, this activity must be successful in achieving its goal. So, students must experience the success of achieving their goal. If they fail all the time, if they cannot solve the problem, if it's too difficult, if it's too, if, if we, the teacher is never satisfied, so they will not achieve the goal, they will not experience proud, they will not build their learning script. So, uh, and third, the achievement of the goal suddenly releases the individual from the preceding effort and the effect that accompanies and amplifies first triggering enjoyment joy. In short, healthy pride involves what Bruce Ex called competence pleasure when our competence has been tested in an atmosphere of excitement. When lives are ruled by shame in a competitive setting in the classroom, bullying is not so far. So <laughs> I will go on with uh, those uh, disability learning scripts